HPA Enterprises proudly presents the newest addition to the exciting world of arts and crafts, Bodabra. It isn't magic, it just seems that easy. And here's our host, Sandy Sandler. Welcome to Crafting with Bodabra. In this video, we'll go over all of the basics for making beautiful hand-tied bows so you can begin immediately crafting and creating with your Bodabra. You'll be amazed at the wonderful bows you can create. You'll never pay outrageous prices or settle for store-bought bows again. There are three types of bow making techniques you'll learn in this video and they will be the foundation for thousands of variations and styles. The possibilities are endless limited only by fabrics, materials, and your imagination. The three basic techniques I'll be showing you today are the scrunch, the fold, and the fold and twist. Remember, this is a video, so you can stop, rewind, learn at your own pace. Now, are you ready to have fun and become a creative, bow-making wizard that will amaze your friends and family? Let's make some bows. The first step to making any bow in Bodabra is to first take your bow tie or wire. You can tie your bow with anything you like, anything you would use to tie a hand-tied bow. I like to use either a curling ribbon that's strong or a bow wire. I'll first take my curling ribbon and lie it down in my Bodabra. Then, once my ribbon is in there, I'm going to make a scrunch bow. And the first step to making a scrunch bow is to take any kind of material you want. What I'm using now is a material called Lumavan. It's a little metallic, and all I'm doing is putting it down the center of my Bodabra. And I'm just going to pull it down straight with my hands, just like this. And that's all there is to our scrunch bow. Then I take my Bodabra wand, and I put my wand down the center and push it down scrunch it down, then I take both sides of my ribbon, tie it off. I'll hold the bodabra on the top, lift it out, bring it around to the other side, and tie a knot. And then I can take that and tie it around a gift, just like I've done over here with this bottle. And you have a really cute little bow, you just fluff it out. And that's very simple. Again, we're going to make another scrunch bow. This time, first we take our bow ribbon or cord or wire, whatever you decide to use, put it down the center of your bow dabra, then take a piece of Lumaband, and I'm going to mix colors for a different effect. And again, just slide your Lumaband down, and you can take your wand, scrunch the first piece in, then take your next piece of Lumaband, push that in, and again you can scrunch that down with your wand. And I'll take my third piece, and each piece is probably around 13 or 14 inches. The longer you make the piece, then the bigger and puffier your bow will be. So if it's for a smaller item, you might want to use a little less ribbon. Then I just take my cord, tie it off, and I'll pull down on the bodabra pull it out, and you have a really cute little pom-pom bow. Here's another example of a simple scrunch bow where all I did was take a piece of the silver punch that you get in your kit, as well as a little piece of fabric ribbon, and put it together, and you have a great little scrunch bow. And here's how I made that cute little bow. First I took a piece of my bow wire, and I'll cut it long enough so that I can fold it in half. Then what I'm going to do is fold it in half, because when you're using a thicker ribbon or fabric, it's nicer to double it and you don't have to worry as much about it breaking on you when you tie your knot. Then I'm going to take a couple of inches of the silver punch, and you can use any color or any fabric you want. I'll push the punch down in my bodabra. Then what I'm going to do is take a little piece of this fabric, and I'll put that right down in my bodabra, and I will take my wand scrunch it down with my wand, then I'll take the two ends of my ribbon and I'm going to take the two em open ends and put them through the loop and then just tie it. That allows me to pull tightly. Then what I'm going to do 
is take the two ends around to the back and I'm just going to twist my bow away from me so it gets tight and then I can put that on the front of my package. Another great use for the Bodabra is making hair bows. What I'm going to do is show you a very simple method using your scrunch bow. First, again, we just take a piece of our bow tie and lay that down the center of the unit. First, I'll take a little sheet of the pink tool and I'll just slide that right in, scrunch it down. Then I'll take some of the blue and we'll just scrunch that right down in there. And I will take a piece of the pink and we scrunch that right down in there. And it's so simple. Your little girls will love making bows to match all of their outfits. Then again, we just tie it off, fluff it out, but you need to, of course, whoops, <laughs> don't forget to knot it like I just did. And we'll fluff it out, tie it to a little hair clip, and put it in the hair. Just like with your scrunch bow, in the fold bow, the first thing I'm going to do is take some of my bow wire and fold it in half. Then I'm going to stick it down the center of the bow dabra, and I'm going to take some material. Now the reason that we call it just a fold bow is because all I'm going to do is fold and push. The first thing I'll do is look at how long a tail I want. If I want my tail to be short, then I'll start and push here. If I want a longer tail, then I'll push here. I think that for this bow that I'm going to make, I'm going to make my tail about that long. And it's just whatever you think is the right size for the bow you're making. All I'm going to do here is just push it right in and down. Then I'm going to fold back and push. And I'm going to fold it and push. And I'm going to fold it. And about every three loops that I fold, I'm going to take my bow dabra wand, bring it in, scrunch it down, and then I'll start over. And I'm going to make as many loops as I need to make my bow whatever fullness that I've determined. And you'll learn by practice pretty much the size you want your bows to be. For this with ribbon, it helps to have about three to six loops on each side. And again, it just depends on the fullness you want. I'm just going to fold and push. And don't worry if your loops aren't exactly the same. Remember, we're making a hand-tied bow. And with a hand-tied bow, it's never going to be exact. And again, we're just going to push, and I'll make two more loops. And I'll push down there. It also helps if you determine exactly how long you want your ribbon before you start making it. Then you don't have to worry about twisting your bolt as you go along. And one more time, I'm just going to push down in there, take my wand, scrunch it down, and I'm going to clip my tail so it's equal to the tail on the other side. And I'm going to take the two ends, and again I'm going to take this end here, put it through my loop, and pull it up, and pull my bow out. Then I'm going to separate the two sides here, pull them around to the back, hold it tightly with my fingers and I'm kind of pushing this there and I'm going to twist the bow, not my hand. Always twist the bow away from you and that'll hold the bow in place. Then I'm ready to fluff. Now when I fluff, the first thing that I'm going to do is kind of pull my tails downwards. And then once I have my tails pretty much where I want them, and remember you can play with it, I'm going to take my two hands and put them in the two back bows and fluff it apart. Then I'm going to go to the next bow and fluff it in an opposite direction. And I'm putting my whole hand in there to really fluff it full. And then I go again to the next one. Then I go to the other side and I do exactly the same thing. It's also easier if you tie the bow on a package before you puff it. Because remember, I'm puffing it out in the air, but when I'm on a package, I'm going to have a flat surface that's going to be pushing it forward and it'll make it look puffier but you can see how simple that is. You can save time by pre-making your bows, storing them in a plastic bag. Then, when you need the bow, take it out, puff it, and put it on your gift. 
Now I'm going to show you a variation on the simple fold bow, which actually looks very elegant and is deceivingly simple. First I'm going to take a piece of my white ribbon and I'm going to lay it in here and then I'm just going to fold it over. And again, it's just fold and push, fold and push. And don't forget, I put the wire in first. The first step you always make is to place your wire in your bodabra. But if you do happen to forget to put it in, all you have to do is lift up your ribbon and feed it through. Occasionally, when you start making a lot of bows, what might happen is your ribbon might break when you're going to tie it. You haven't lost your bow. All you have to do is lift it up, push it down, then scrunch it again with your wand, and you're good to go. Now what I'll do again is continue folding my bow, and again it's just fold and push, and fold and push. And it's nice because as we'll show you later, you can take different techniques and put them together. But this time we're just going to put two fold and push bows together. Now I'm going to take this gold material, and again I'm going to fold and push. And you can use this method for any ribbon that's the same on both sides. And just straighten my ribbon, and again I'm just fold and push. And you can see how really simple this is. This bow could be used for anything from a gift basket, um, a New Year's gift, maybe a wedding gift. Um, you could add flowers and turn it into a bridal corsage. There's so much that you could do to it. And as far as how big I make it, I'm just going to use up my ribbon and we'll see what size bow we have. There's really no right or wrong way to use the bow dabra. Here what I'm going to do again is take my wand, scrunch it down, pull it up, take my ends, and put this through there. Again, holding the top of the bow dabra, pull my bow, push it down tight, then take my two ends and bring them around to the back. And again, just like we did on the other bow, now here is a little bit thicker than with my other bow. So I'm going to just twist it a little bit, then hold it tight with this finger and twist the bow. That'll make it very tight and very easy to fluff. And I'll probably twist it several times so it's pretty tight. Or you, if you're using just a plain string, all you have to do is tie a knot. Then using the same technique, I'm going to fluff out my bow. And again, we just fluff here. And I think that you pretty much get the idea on fluffing. And what I'm going to show you here is this is the same bow finished as we put it on a basket. Now what I'm going to show you is another technique using the fold and push method that we just learned combined with the scrunch bow. Again, I'm going to put my wire or my ribbon into the bow dabra, and I'm just going to take my ribbon and fold and push. And again, I'm just going to fold and push and fold and push. And I'm just going to leave it with two loops on there. And what I'm going to do is clip the end here. I'm going to take a little piece of my tooling and I'm going to scrunch that down. I'm going to take my wand and push it down there. And I'm going to take a little piece of the Luma band and put that right there in the center. And take another little piece of the punch just for texture and scrunch that down right there. Then what I'm going to do again is take the two ends, take these ends through the loop, pull it up, make it tight. One of the reasons that I make it tight when it's in the bow dabra is that if by chance the bow, the wire breaks while I'm pulling it tight, at least I don't lose my bow. I can just push it right down in the, in the bow dabra and feed it through. Then I take the two opposite ends, again bring them to the back, twist the bow, and you could leave it just as it is or you can fluff it out. And that's so simple to make, yet looks very elegant and expensive. Another example of this type of bow is the simple one that we made here and put on a basket 
which is the exact same technique, just using a different material. That's what's so fun about this, is the more you practice and the more you experiment with the Bodabra, the more creative you can become. Now what we're going to do is what we call the fold and twist bow. The reason that we need to fold and twist is because one side of the ribbon is the right side and the other side is the wrong side. And you want to make sure that the right side of the ribbon is always facing up. The first thing that you're going to do is determine how long a tail you want. So let's say we want our tail to be this long. Then I'm going to take my thumb and hold it right there and I'm going to twist it. Then I'm going to push it down into the bodabra. Then what I'm going to do is make a loop on the other side, determine the size I want my loop to be, hold my thumb there, twist it, and push. So all it is is a fold, a twist, and a push. It's very simple. Again, make my loop, hold my thumb, twist without moving this thumb, and push it down. And if your twist isn't exactly right, you can straighten it out when you get down into your bodabra. Then I'm going to make another loop, go back, fold it, and twist it. And now at this point I'm going to take my bodabra wand, scrunch it down so that I have a straight line here, bring my ribbon back over, fold it, and twist it. And again the same step, bring it over, fold, and twist. Now one of the things that people like to do occasionally is to vary the lengths of their loops. I'm going to make mine all the same size this time, but if you're making a bow, you can start with a bigger loop and go smaller and smaller and smaller. Just depends on what you feel like it, you want the bow to look like. Again, fold and twist, and fold and twist, and we're going to fold and twist. And it's so simple. This would be a great bow for in a home, over um, if you wanted to accent a pillow, maybe accent a new floral arrangement that you got in. Um, it makes beautiful present. It also would look really pretty on the back of a plain dress. It's really whatever your imagination can come up with, you can do with a bodabra. And we're going to take this apart again. Now, as we have mentioned before, this is much thicker than when you do your scrunch and even thicker than with your fold bow. So what I'm going to do here is twist it a little bit while I keep hold of these two ends so I don't lose my bow. And then I'm going to twist my bow away from me. And once it's secure, then I can fluff it out. And with the wired bow, you can really fluff it into exactly the shape that you want. For a perfectly coordinated bow for your hair or for the back of a dress, just use the excess hem material and it can make a gorgeous bow in the bodabra. First thing that I've done here is to take a piece of my bow ribbon lay it down the center just like we do with our other bows. And now we're going to make a fold and twist using three different types of fabric. I'm making here what I would call a wedding bow. I have um, a piece of satin, a piece of tulle, and a piece of punch. It's a very, very thick bow. You won't have to make as many loops as you normally would. Here I'm going to hold it in the center, twist it, and push. And then I'm going to straighten my three pieces of fabric out, fold them back over, twist it, and push it down. And again, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to fold and twist. And again, the amount of loops that you make will be for the size, um, puffiness, or thickness of the bow. And the width of your loops, you can just determine based on how big your gift is. Then twist it there. These make wonderful pubos for in a wedding. You could use it using just, say, the acetate or just the tool and the punch. It really doesn't matter. The one nice thing about the bow drabra, as I've said over and over again, is the fact that your imagination is really what limits you and the supply of ribbons. And I'll tell you, we have found some of the most beautiful ribbons in the world um, that we will make available to you if you just contact us. And again, I'm just going to fold and twist. And I want to be careful to keep all of my ribbon in line. And again, I'm going to fold back over here. And I think what I've done here is make about four loops on each side. 
Now on the last loop, because I want my right side to be up, I'm not going to twist. I'm just going to push it straight down the same way we did on our fold and twist bow before. I'm going to take my Bodabra wand. I'm going to scrunch all that down. Then I'm going to take my tie. And again, I picked a color tie that matches with my bow so it won't show. Pull it up here. And of course, we can't forget, we have to bring it around to the back. And because we have the thickness on the bow here, I'm going to twist it just a little bit to make it easier to tie it off. And I'm going to tie a knot in the back. And I'm going to double that knot because it's not like with the wire well, all you have to do is twist. And I'm going to leave that long so I have something to tie onto my gift. And I'm going to clip my tail. And just like with our other bows, put my hand down the center and fluff it out. And you can see what a finished fluffed bow looks like right here. Here what I've done is taken a layer of punch and a layer of velvet, which makes a wonderful Christmas or um, wreath bow. And you can use it depending on the fabric, the type of material, the size of the bow. You can make it for any season or need. The Bodabra is also perfect because it adapts for any holiday. What I've done here is taken a simple patriotic or 4th of July theme. You can use it to decorate gifts or decorate your backyard if you're having a barbecue. Again, I'm going to take this piece of tool and I'm going to do my fold and twist. And I'm going to twist it and push it down, fold it back over, twist and push it down. And I'm going to make several loops and kind of give it a round little puffy effect. And then what I'll do, and you'll see in a minute, is take another kind of material and just layer the different sorts of materials that I'm using in my bow. Now on this you'll see my tail comes to that side but I don't care because I'm using so many materials and there are going to be so many loops that it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the way it, you would do it if it were just this one type of material. Then I'll take my silver punch and I'll make my tail here and here I don't need to twist. I just have to fold and push. And again, I'm just going to fold and push. And I'm going to make about three loops on one side and two on the other, so I'm equal to what I did below. Then I'm going to take my blue punch. And again, before I do that, though, I'm going to straighten out my bodabra with my wand and scrunch it all down. And then I'll take my piece of blue. And I'm just going to, again, fold it and push. And I am going to just, can't cut that with my wand, can I? Take a piece, cut it off, again scrunch it down, and now I'm going to take a little piece of red fabric here and use just my scrunch, I'm going to do it this way, scrunch that right down in there. And then for a little added texture, I'm going to take a little piece of my blue and scrunch that right down into the center. Then take my wand, push it down, take the ends of my ribbon, bring it through, and then pull it up. And again, pull it kind of tightly, being careful not to break it. And I want to separate the two ends, bring them a bring them around to the back so I'm holding them in my hand, hold it tightly and then grasp and twist the bow just a little bit and then tie off the back. Just take a little bit of practice but it's not difficult to do once you get the feel of exactly what the movement is. And I'm going to knot it again and I'm going to just puff out that bow. And here's one here that we've made previously that's already puffed. Another bow that I made for say a Thanksgiving theme is this one where we just took the mesh and again it was just a fold and push. Then I took a little piece of 
um, silk leaves with the silk acorns and worked that into the bow. And it's so simple to do. It's the same sort of thing that we did on our hair bow that you see in this other clip. Hunt for bargains at fabric stores. All the little pieces of leftover ribbon and fabric that nobody wants will make beautiful bows in your bodabra. One of the great things about the bodabra is it does work with virtually any fabric or material. So you can take a wider fabric or a thinner fabric and then you can also mix them together. What I'm going to do in this example is take a wide inch tool and I'm going to cut the tool and make a very wide scrunch bow. Actually, as you'll see when I'm doing this, I'm just going to push it down in and of course I've already put my um, bow cord in. And if I wanted, I could actually make a really pretty big scrunch bow that could go on the top of the gift just like this. But what I'm going to do is take it one step further. I'm going to scrunch it down and I'm going to take two pieces of acetate and layer them, one blue and pink, basically going on a baby theme. And I'm going to twist, push down, fold it, twist and push. And again, it's just fold, twist, push. And you can make this as big or as little as you like, just depending on the size of the gift that you're making and how elaborate you want your bow to be. And then you just scrunch it down here, lift it out. Again, I'm going to bring my string up, bring it through, puff it out. And once I've pulled it out of the center, I'm going to again bring this around to the back and grab these two pieces in my hand to make sure that I hold on to my bow. And just like in the other bows, we've got it very thick here. While holding both strings in my hand there, I'm going to twist it around. Again, go to the back and tie my knot. Then what I'll do is I'm going to obviously clip my tail to the length. And on this one, I don't want a long tail. I want my tails to be the same length as my loops. And then you just puff out your loops by pulling the two colors, pink and the blue, in opposite directions every other one. So on this one, my blue's going to go, my blue's going to, go to the left, my pink to the right. Here, my pink to the left, blue to the right. And you just alternate it and puff the whole thing out. Then puff the back out. And when you're done, you'll have a bow that looks very similar to this bow here that we've made. Thanks so much for watching. Bowdabra is almost unlimited when it comes to creating beautiful bows to accent so many aspects of your life. Future videos will show specially designed bows for even more uses than you've seen here. Special events, baby gifts, party decorations, floral, fashion, interior design, gift baskets, and much, much more. I hope you've enjoyed the time you've spent as much as I've enjoyed showing you the fun and ease of Bodabra. I wish you hours of fun ahead.